Man, oh man. <laughs> like what I'm what I'm trying to say here, right, is in five years, the this group stage from United will be looked back upon in terms of the realm in the realm of the streets will never forget. The streets will never forget the 2023-24 Man United Champions League group stage. 4-3, loss. 4-3, loss. 3-2, loss. 3-3, draw. And then a last-minute penalty save and a Harry Maguire winner. It's chaos. It is drama. For the neutral, it is exuberant. For the United fans, it's an absolute nightmare. It is horrendous. Like, that was our game to win. We had the game on our terms, away, in the hardest away day in the world, at Galatasaray. We had the game on our terms, we were 2 0 up. We choke a goal, it's 2 1, it's half time, we're in the lead. We get another Wan Bissaka cross into McTominay, it's 3 1, the game's on our terms, it is our game to win, we make the necessary substitutions. But Andre Onana is uh, once again a liability in some games. Like he, I'm not going to just go back on the Onana hate train because he's been in absolutely brilliant form lately, ever since that penalty save in the Copenhagen game, but like, I, he was inexcusable today. In undefendable, and the th- I'm doing some stuff like the, the the UKFC Player of the Year votes, and he currently sits in the top three on the leaderboard, and it's just it, I feel like it's misrepresentative because oh sorry it is representative because he has had a good season as a whole. It's just some of these games are costing us massively, and he really needs to step up in these big moments like that elbow that just put their ball into the back of the net. Oh, I couldn't believe it. It was. I couldn't defend him. I, I had no energy. Like, it's 4 a.m. right now. I've had no sleep. Having to watch that's draining, man. And, like, at least it was an entertaining game. At, at least we weren't playing boring football. But Galatasaray was so open. Like, that was our game to win. The Palistri sitter. Like, Palistri, man. Missed so many sitters. McTominay had to score that long-range effort. It was pretty much an open net. Bruno hit the post from outside the box. The amount of clear-cut chances we got in the, in the uh, last 10, 15 minutes of the game as well as poor decision-making, such as not carrying it into a winger or a midfielder when we should have. We're taking two or three seconds too long trying to make a pass. It's just so frustrating. Let's get into these play ratings. I know it's got to be a two. Um, cost us all three goals, really. I mean, not not all three goals. I thought no, I think the first goal, people are saying Onaga should have done better. All goalkeepers are already on one leg, going one way, where the free kick's expected to go. I can't blame him on that. Like, that, that would have been really difficult. Second goal should have done better. Th- uh, sorry, second goal was horrendous. Off his elbow and in. Like, prime start of the season, Anana. Third goal was... Again, should have done better. Awful, Anana. Um, Wan-Bissaka, heavy... T- uh, look. Wan-Bissaka's going to get a six. I thought... Like, the defence played well. Defence actually played well. It was Onana that cost us. And the one goal that I thought he couldn't really save was a free kick. Like, the defence realistically defended a clean sheet. Um, Wan-Bissaka played well. He got the assist. A few heavy touches in the first half, but I thought a lot of us did. Uh, Maguire's probably got to be a 6.5 for me. Um, I'm not sure why we're just giving low scores for the sake of it. Uh, really going on the ball. He got advanced in the... Pi- up on the pitch, he was creating a few attacking players by getting the ball to the wingers, really proactive, quick out of his box, um, I thought Maguire actually played really well to get high up, uh, Lindelof probably also a 6.5, Maguire and Lindelof were faultless, these low scores are just because of whatever, but just because it was a frustrating result, obviously, but realistically, Lindelof and Maguire defended a clean sheet, Luke Shaw got himself an assist, he's also a 6.5, no, probably a 6 actually, he got himself an assist, um, but I thought, again, he didn't look um, incredibly sharp. I thought he really looked a bit clunky. But defended well in the second half. Amrabat, probably a 5.5. Um, not awful, but we just need to give him opportunities because he's, he's better than McTominay. Like, if we play... Like, I get McTominay is, like, valuable because of his goal knack and all, but if we play Amrabat and Manu... That is such a solid midfield with Bruno having free roam as the number 10, which he looks so dangerous in today as he did against Everton. Um, Amrabat's got to keep playing. We've just given him opportunities. It's not his fault that he's not hitting the ground running. Like, we've played him left back for most of the time he's been here. Look, McTominay scored, but, like... Oh, like, such a generous six. Such a generous six. Like, incredibly generous. He was really shit, but he did score. And that got us a point in the end, which ever so slightly keeps us in the Champions League. That's if we beat Bayern 
in two weeks. Ah, uh, Bruno, seven, man of the match. Brilliant, exuberant. Bosch, fantastic. Oh, lovely. I mean, that, that long-range effort, that long-range goal was incredible. Hit the post at the very end, which really should have been 4-3. Creative monster, playing balls that no Mifio could dream of playing. Bruno, man, my captain, on the back of the shirt, too. Anthony's getting a seven. Um, that's a fucking agenda, because Anthony was brilliant. Look, he, like, first came back from injury, he looked so sharp, and his decision-making... Like, he wasn't using his right foot a lot, but he could get around anyone with that left foot. I, I, he barely lost possession, if not didn't. He couldn't misplace a pass. Looked really sharp. Like, his ball control was insane. Like, Anthony, really good. His creativity was on a different level today. If he can keep that up, he will be him. He, he, he will be him. Ganacho, 6.5. Um, yeah, perfect. Got a goal. Brilliant finish with the left foot as well. Um, very, very selfish in areas. Again, tried to go for a few too many long-range efforts, which I thought a lot of us were doing, but I thought Ganacho was a bit extra ambitious, but really well taken goal, and I thought creatively he did look dangerous on the left. Uh, Rasmus, I'm going to give it a six, because there was no service for him, and I thought his hold-up play was quite important in that first goal for Ganacho. so yeah, he gets a six. Cobby, 6.5, really composed off the bench, really good physicality. He's probably our only defensive force in midfield in that second half. Uh, Martial, again, six. I feel really bad for him. He, he, he was doing really well on the hold-up play, and then he just wasn't getting served, in which could have been a 4-3, 5-3, 6-3 win. Um, the low six, didn't notice him. Uh, Polistri is probably going to be a five. I mean, he missed an absolute sitter. Um, he missed a few sitters. I mean... I, I get Polistri's got a, bit, a little bit less of an unselfish knack than Ganacho, but I thought he was quite unselfish, and he's not a natural left winger, so he's just got to do better. Um, Ten Hag, look, I thought the subs were good from Ten Hag. I, I, I rated all the subs he made. Team selection was good. I, I like we started Anthony over Polistri. I like we started Rasmus in the game like this over Martial. I thought the subs all came at a perfect time, and they were the right subs. Only thing I might have started Amrabat over McTominay, but, like, sorry, um... Maynou over McTominay, but Maynou, it was such awful conditions pre-game with the pitch and everything and the away hostility that it would have been a really, really hard game to chuck him into. And McTominay has got that goal knack and he showed it by scoring a goal. So that is the reason he's in the team. And then the back four, like, I would have rather played Varane, but Maguire and Lindelof has such good synergy at the moment. I don't really see a way back for five-time Champions League winner Raphael Varane into a second back partnership with Lindelof and Maguire, which is crazy to say. He can't find his way into that, but... It's just the truth. They have synergy with each other. Ten Hag, six. Like, yeah. He, he managed he managed to win. It's Anana. Anana's the man to blame. And I, I hate to blame players like that, but he, he simply is. 54% of the vote. Bruno Fernandes, absolutely brilliant. Uh, thank you all for watching. We've got Newcastle on Sunday. The fixtures keep on coming. Then I think we've got Chelsea and Bayern Munich. So, you know, lovely couple of weeks coming up. Let's quickly take a look at... The uh, player of the year votes it is Bruno who gets the five. Anthony who gets his first votes of the year with four. Maguire gets the three. Garnacho gets the two. And Victor Lindelof gets the one. Ligaborg, it's Diogo Dolo who still has, is, is in first. His Portuguese teammate though, Bruno, has moved up into second. Only one vote behind. Onana sits in third because of that really good patch of games he had. And Casemiro into fourth. And Harry Maguire moves into the top five in fifth. Equal with Casemiro. But there is a seven vote gap. Uh, from third to fourth. A really big gap there. The top three is really pulling away. But Bernardo keeps performing like this. Um, I'll tell you what, Casemiro might catch back up to him before he comes back from injury. All right, thank you all for watching. I will see you all next time. Cheers.